Here we are in the garage level and we can see the player car. One of the functions that I've added is the ability for the player to change the car body. Two options is good enough for now, so we can see we can change it from the sky car to a sports car. And we can even do a couple of colors. I only have black and green in there for now. And the reason is because if I can do it twice, I can do it 20 times. So I'm not so worried about getting the complete list of colors or paint jobs for the cars just yet. Now that I know I can do it, I can just add those later. And we can also see that once we select it, oh, we've got these arrows that will actually turn the car around so we can examine the car from all angles, which is kind of cool. I'd like to make these smoother, but for now this is good enough. And then if we hit the play button, the new scene is going to load with all of our options in there. We can see it's the green sports car and all of our functions work. The controller activates just like it should. The speedometer works, the lap timer works, the lap count works, um, all that fun stuff. So we have a good working system for updating the look and feel of our car, and I will cover how I did that right now. The first step is taking a look at the saved variables within the Bolt slash visual scripting system that we have. And what that's going to do is set active for the sky car body or the sports car body or any future car bodies that we have. It's just a Boolean and the script is going to set those active or not depending on what the player selects. Now, these saved variables are saved in the player preferences system. So we don't want to overload this too much, but using this for Booleans and things like the body color, that'll be okay for now. So this script is going to run every time the level loads. And this is when the player returns to the garage from racing a level. The same script is going to run when they load into that level to race. Off the event start unit, it's going to go into a branch and that branch is going to check to see if the sky car body is active. If it is active, it's going to set the sky car body to active within the game object, and it's going to run a custom trigger to set the body color of that same game object to whatever the body colors we have saved. If that's false, then it's going to set the sports car body to active. Now this is going to be quite the train. If we do have 10 or so game objects that can be activated or deactivated, we'll have to run this every time. And I don't normally like doing a branch to a branch to a branch to a branch, so to speak, but I think in this case it's going to be okay because it will only run at the start and it should get through it rather quickly. I don't, I don't think we'll notice any performance degradation there. And then in the second one, it's just going to run on the body of the sports car and set it to active and set its body color. The options themselves are stored in the UI system. In the body panel that you see on the left, we'll go into the scene view so you can take a look at it. It's hidden for now, it's, it's actually off, and so when the player clicks on the body panel, this is an, actually a button. So when the player clicks the button, so here's the, the button outline, here's the text that just says body style. Um, on click, it's just gonna activate the body panel style and then, or deactivate the body panel style. So it's gonna run a branch, and it's going to say, okay, if body style panel is active, then show it to me or turn it off. And the paint color button does the same thing. So it's going to activate or deactivate the paint panel based on whether or not the current panel is active. Here are these arrows that I made to rotate the car. They're just UI elements of left arrow, right arrow. And on click, they both do a very similar function. So we've got a left button and a right button that you can see. And on the left button, it's just a, a button that's an on click event. It takes the car rotates it on an axis, so this is a rotate transform on axis, which we don't want to rotate the X or the Z, only the Y, by an angle of 20. And that's all I did to make this work for now. And the right button is the same thing, but it's just minus 20 to go the other direction. So you can see that if I click the right, it goes to what I think the right should be and what I think the left should be. And it's as simple as that. The button itself for is for sky car and for sports car. So each button in theory should look a lot like these flow charts here. So on pointer click, it's going to set the sky car to active, set the sports car to deactive. It's going to uh, set the variable, which is an application variable also. So there's two variables here. It's going to take the sky car body and plug that into the application variable set car body for active car body. Okay. And then it's going to set the save variable for sky car body active. And it's going to also set the save variable for sports car body active. Now, I might have a pretty long train of, of these variables being set down the road. Say there is 10 cars, there'll be 10 of these variables that, that end up getting set. That should happen very quickly with system wise. So I don't mind, I don't like to have a big giant node tree, but again, having a lot of these variables and I might structure it differently to where it actually goes down. So it does something like this rather than go left to right, just so that I can see that it's kind of doing the same thing in a loop to me, that makes a little bit more sense. And that all happens in the UI and then it saves this Boolean variable. And then that one script when it starts will run every time you, you play a new level. So that's kind of the logic there behind setting a setting a, a, a body type. The paint type is actually the same exact thing. So we're going to go into 
the black color and it's going to say, hey, we can't set the body color because there is no active car body. This is the application variable that we use and there is no there is no body color yet. So it says, hey, this is a null value and it is a null value for now and that's fine. When the game's running, it becomes an actual value and that's okay. We are going to have one of these scripts for each material that we want the player to select and we just actually grab the material and we feed it into the application set variable for body color. Off that node, what we do is we take it and plug it into the set body color custom event. And then we take the active car body that we have, and we plug it in to that game object. The custom script for setting the body color actually lives in the car's body. So every car body that I have in the game has this little script attached to it. So it takes from self and it's called set body color. So this is the custom event. It lives again, it lives on both of the bodies for every car or all 10 of the bodies for every car. It's very lightweight. And what it's going to do, it's going to get the component for its own mesh renderer from itself. And it's going to set the material to whatever I have saved in the body color. Real simple, real, real simple. And the last thing we have to do is make sure that when the game loads, or in other words, when a race loads, that we run that script, this script, it's just the same. We can copy and paste this script from the garage scene into all the other scenes. Of course, when we duplicate this scene to make another track, this will all carry over just fine. So we will have to copy and paste the additional car bodies when that happens because this it, this is an embedded script so that way we can access non prefab game objects if it's a saved script you can only access prefabs in visual scripting so it's one of the limitations that I had to learn about but that's okay and using the system we are now able to set the type and we can set the color we can add as many colors as we want to we can add as many car body types as we want to I'm gonna keep that pretty minimal they're gonna carry over from level to level to level for more content like this, please remember to like the video and subscribe and I'll see you next time.